You're listening to the Forest School Podcast with Lewis Ames and Gemma Sutherden. Hello. Good evening. Good, good evening, madam. Good evening. Again. How, and how, how are you? Well, I'm fine. And we're pretending that we haven't already been chatting on Zoom for like... For like three hours. Three, <laughs> three hours. <laughs> because... Like, you would have thought, right, that every risk assessment that could ever be conceived of has already been written <laughs> by us. But it turns out, no. It turns okay. out there's always more to write. Just always. Just if you just really feel a bit bored, that like you need to do something else, just another lovely risk-benefit assessment. Or do um, that really fun thing, just because, you know, let's start the podcast on a, on a real high note. If you want to do something enjoyable and you're in the UK, just go and look at some guidance. Go look at some look at some guidance that you looked at before because sometimes they add or take away sentences and they in no way mark that they've added or taken away sentences. So so just it's like a it's like a pick your own adventure. Except they're feeling all tired, shit. Feeling tired. <laughs> just get a little pick me up by visiting gov.uk. Yeah, yeah. Applications for forest school training are now open at childrenoftheforest.com. Check out the podcast links for more details. We saw an advert the other day on the TV. And I don't know if your family do this, but we sometimes play Guess the Advert in our house. Was it the Peppa Pig one? Did you, did you play that game? No. Oh, it's a real, it's the height of capitalism. But essentially when you're watching the advert break, you all shout at the TV what the brand is. Yeah. And whoever gets it first w- wins that advert. So, okay. you know, it's partly like, you know, you see... I don't know. Someone's starting to pour, pour a cup of tea and you will madly shout like, it's Typho, it's Yorkshire, t- it's whatever yeah. else. We were watching one the other day and we were like, that's for holidays. No, 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 that's, that's, oh, do you know what it's going to be? It's going to be about banks. It's going to be about credit cards. And then at the end it came up and it was like, this is an advert from the British government. And it was suddenly <laughs> very like, Ugh, get out of my house. I don't what? like this. Do you do it with the sound off or something? No. Oh. What it was, was it? What were they saying? Was, it was an advert of like people doing normal things right so it was like trying on a dress in a shop and paying for stuff paying for an ice cream out of a van and all the you know Mm. stuff that would make you think like oh this is about holidays this is about yeah I thought it was going to be like a bank going oh we've raised the limit of contactless or whatever um but it was the government being like essentially we're going to get back to normal but don't be silly no silliness you silly people um still exists everyone just a quick reminder of that it's very yeah. important it's almost as important as everybody's health and well-being this I mean, might be an awful podcast that we never actually release because uh <laughs> as an example of how loopy we have gone Gemma has tied uh <laughs> apple headphones wired headphones around her head in a headband and she did it while i was talking in no way like it's just attempting to put me off the whole time, and is now making a hair met just as unprofessional. <laughs> people, people tune in for professionalism. I know, um, man. But we've got to release the video alongside it because it's <laughs> it's very nice. It's very nice. Okay, what we're we talking about? We are talking about the fact that you and I have been back to work. We've done two days back in the woods with. Ooh. Real children, real life, three-dimensional children yes. with real life, three-dimensional trees and interacted and did everything. And I just thought it would be good for us to publicly reflect, not on the children and not on our risk assessments. So I'm very sorry if you've listened to this so far and gone, yes, I'm going to listen to Gemma and Lewis talk about risk assessments because that's what I love. I love <laughs> risk assessments. Oh, I love it. Oh, <laughs> mitigating. Um, <laughs> if that's what you've tuned in for, I'm very sorry. We're only going to talk about ourselves and our, our, ourselves and our feelings and our and our aging bodies. Yes. Well, that can we start <laughs> with that, please? Because yeah, we did the whole like step count competition, didn't we? It wasn't an intentional competition. Oh, really? Well, I didn't I, know it was a competition. No, I didn't make it. Uh, it wasn't a competition. Go on, I then, tell the story. Sent, I sent you. So I got home after day one um, with my kids who come there now. 
and we all just went Pleh! on the sofa in a really nice way and we've got this amazing stroke completely hideous depending on who you are in my family uh blanket which my gran gave me thank you granny wombat uh it is like fake fur electric blanket very kind of shaggy brown tinged with white fake fur like a like a wolf has died um but yeah you plug it in electric blanket mm -mm, delicious so we're all under that and i read a book it was really nice and then i tried to get up and i was like oh my legs <laughs> just like frozen in the position on the sofa i was like, oh, i wonder what my step count was today and i can't remember what it was but it was like three times more than i have been walking on average a day yeah and then you Your, know yours was on like eight thousand, i think yeah and normally it was three yeah um that's not three times but nearly um yeah and then you sent me yours and it was like a billion steps i, I like, did yeah. i did nearly 14 kilometers um and while and whilst baby wearing with a uh, for those of you who don't know my my daughter is uh, 15 stone and i carry it on my back <laughs> all day she's an absolute heifer she and uh, no she's not she's <laughs> tiny um but but it was a, a so it was definitely a shock and we had done a few days in the week leading up to doing stuff in the woods hadn't we where we'd gone look let's do dry runs with just our kids and we had been in the woods for a bit and we'd been walking around and we'd been building shelters and, um, you know, lifting heavy bits of wood and stuff. And it just did not compare to, mm. I would say going back, I, I sort of realized that when I go, when we go in without kids, it's a wide variety of movement. It's lots yeah. of bending down, picking that up, getting the drill, sawing that, uh, throwing stuff at that squirrel, all those things. And then, um, when we had kids in, I was like, I don't think I did anything today other than walk. Mm. Um, just because that's the, you know, the group that came back were all um, old hands. They didn't need um, hand holding for much um, stuff. So essentially it was just walking over there to see if that group's okay. Walking over there to see if that group's okay. Walking over there to see if that's group's okay. But bearing in mind that our site is very, very slopey. So in that walking, oh, it's yeah. walking up. A very steep hill which is quite slippery every every season it's slippery isn't it because it's kind yeah. of like dry and dusty slippery and when it's been dry um yeah so it's like rough terrain and steep slopes which adds yeah. to it but my ankles were like particularly knackered and then i don't know if you had the same thing but then for like three days after I was just so like brain tired. I slept oh, in yeah. the morning like crazy late, really crazy late. And um and it took me, yeah, a good few days just to recover from that two days back. And yeah. I think that is like the culmination of all of the work that we've been doing to prepare for it suddenly happening. So it's that kind of like rising not anxiety, but you know, when you're preparing for something and you're like putting all of that mental energy into like, so when we open, so when we open, when we open, this will happen, this will happen. What do we need to do about this? And then it happens. It's a bit like rehearsing a play, I guess. And then you have yeah. to finish it and you're like, oh, <laughs> well, it's, it's a very, this is a thing that I think and it relates what, wider than just Lewis and Gemma have a moan um, but about being tired. But we often talk about children and the what, like, one of the most important skills we're trying to develop is uh, like mind sight and thinking about how other people are feeling, thinking about how other people are doing. And sometimes, and we're very good with children at going, oh, do you know what? Like uh, it's three o'clock in the afternoon and they have been, you know, working really hard all day, social, emotional, physical skills, whatever. And then they act irrationally or they get dysregulated at three o'clock and we go, do you know what? I completely get it. You're burnt mm -hmm. out. I, w I wouldn't ask, I wouldn't expect you to, to have the fuel to, to use mindset at that point because it's a taxing skill. Mm -hmm. But I don't think I had ever internalized that you and I have had, other than our childcare, which is different because it's your own children. Mm -hmm. um, we've basically had a three month break from very in depth mindset and going back into it and having to re-stretch to 
you know, however many kids we had and just doing mind sight on eight kids or 10 kids, what do we have, eight kids. Um, and just going, uh, you know, I'm trying to think about how are you all feeling? How are you all doing? What are you all thinking about? What's going on? What's going to happen next? What happened five minutes ago? And trying Holy to- Holy moly. Well, which we, um, cause there was, I think it's worth, it's useful to say as well that in our planning, we were all the time thinking about how the children are going to be feeling, how they're going to find mm. their situations. Um, Not socially. once did we plan for ourselves. No, <laughs> absolutely right. And actually that did occur to me. I did, um, um, I remembered that you and I used to go off, take a turn to take five minutes away. Do you remember that? Mm. I hadn't thought about that for months. And the reason it came into my head must be because subconsciously I was like I could really do with that actually I could really do it just I remember we used to do it and it used to be our sometimes, sometimes we do it my wife and I do it you know we just go okay I just need to take five minutes I'm yeah. just gonna I'm just going off for five minutes but it's harder to do that at work and yeah we, like you say we've done it in the past but it's yeah it's different isn't yeah. it yeah um but I was gonna say something else uh planning for ourselves uh, yeah, and also like planning for the kids socially and emotionally. And um, we talked about that in that podcast with John Cree that we did mm. a while back about, you know, um, any kind of adverse feelings and emotions that might be present that we need to be aware of. And um, and so it wasn't just kind of like watching. It was like preempting, you know, we've got that in our kind of plans for, well, you know, they won't have played with other children for a long time and they won't have had to necessarily um, think, consider another child. Compromise or capitulate or... Yeah, exactly, you know. all of that stuff. Um, so it was kind of like looking out for those moments the whole time. So like, dynam mm. I guess it's dynamically risk assessing the emotional and social risk, um, mm. which you do anyway, it's part of the job, but like that was on full high, uh, high alert. And um and yeah, sure enough, there was some times when, you know, the kids, well, you know, found it a bit overwhelming, as you would might expect. But yeah, it was fine, wasn't it? In the end, I know well, one of the things that I, I think is worth saying that I hadn't realised that I would be rusty. That would, if you'd asked me about it, like straight question, I probably would have realised that it it wasn't going to happen. Um, but after three months off my first attempt at storytelling was some of the worst storytelling I have done <laughs> in years. I I was just slapdash about it. I didn't really think about the story. I forgot bits of it. And then I just tried to pull them back. Luckily, it was a story that the group already knew. And that was intentional that I went, I'm going to try and just, I'm not going to try and do anything new. I'm just going to go, okay, you know this story. It's batshit mental. Um, so it's quite entertaining and funny, but you, they didn't need the perfect retelling. Yeah. But my God, I would just forgotten. What no, it was all on manual again. Do you know yeah. what I mean? It was all kind of like, oh, okay, this is crunchy and it doesn't feel fluid. And did you have that thing that I often get where you go, oh, just tell that story. I know that story, and then you begin to tell it, and you're like, oh, <laughs> I haven't actually worked this all the way through to the end in my head first. I thought I knew it because I've told it loads of times. I've actually forgotten. I've actually forgotten. What but but it came. It was an interesting thing because I don't think the the kids. So on the second day, I did I did tell a story, and it was you were there for that story. And I think that second one, I did the Emperor's New Clothes, and yep. that story I felt like went without a hitch. It was just yep. absolutely smooth. Um, but the one I did on the first day, I did Tatterhood, which is a weird story anyway. It's got too many parts to it and stuff that doesn't relate. And anyway, But having done it before, your daughter reminded me of about six parts. She just, <laughs> like, she was just going, and she heard it a year ago, oh, more. Yeah. And she was pulling stuff up like, you know, we were going off and I'd forgotten a bit and I'd moved on. And then she just went like, doesn't she have a spoon as well? And I was like, of course she's got a spoon. Oh, yeah. yeah, okay. And, yeah. Th and then... It, it became quite organic because I was stopping and going, what happens next? And genuinely I was going, I, yeah. my, my internal map of where I'm going in this story is completely blank. And again, your daughter was going, it's that, it's that bit next, isn't it? Or like, doesn't she go over there? And I was like, yes, yes, yes. Good, <laughs> good, good. Um, and remembering little bits and... Um, At least you got into your story. At least you didn't go... <clears throat> 
Once upon a time, a long, long time ago, and everyone just completely ignores you. <laughs> Although I think I blame you for that because you were like story, story to me, like story time. I was like, okay, I'll I'll go with that idea. Yeah, it was like I think it was. I think no, I think your mistake was that you asked if anybody was in. You sort of didn't have your hat right one you didn't have your hat so the queue wasn't there and you forget how big those physical queues are true but also you stood up and you didn't quite get into them if I can pick apart your storytelling you weren't re- you weren't really in the middle of the group in any way you were sort of off to the side because they'd gone onto the hammocks and you were still off a little bit by the fire yeah but, and you quite loudly went does anyone want to hear a story about I can't remember what you said you must a cat, have said, a cat. And it wasn't, it wasn't a great, uh, it, it didn't hook any of them. And kind of, I think even uh, your son or your daughter, possibly one of them looked at you, made eye contact about, do you want to hear a story about cat? And then walked off. And you still went, uh, long time ago. And sort of, you just did this little wandering root thing. It was like you were a wandering minstrel going table to table. Maybe like a, you know, like a mariachi person. It goes table to table in a well, restaurant. Maybe, maybe, maybe that was my vibe with that story. I could have got out my ukule- ukulele and you know and done that. Maybe I'll try that next time I tell that story. Yeah, but with the hat. I think so. I think the hat was all that was missing. You We've done have... that before, where you have played the uke in the background. There's little background music and the kalimba. That was good. Oh yeah, the kalimba. The kalimba, do you know what we've done? Uh, I don't know if we've ever talked about this on the podcast. Um, <laughs> we went to Somerset Play Forum and you and I did some story, some storytelling workshops for loads of primary school teachers and nursery workers and stuff. And then at the end of the day, they said, oh, would you guys mind? And there were loads of other workshops going on. And they said, would you guys mind closing out the workshop um, by doing a story for everyone? And I ended up telling the story in the in the middle of a car park, just because yeah. you try and get adults. They'd all gone outside. They're all milling around trying to go to their car. And I just went, do you know what? I'm just going to absolutely shout my tits off here. And I'm going to get them. I'm going to get them hooked in a story. And I did. And it was a good story. Um, but there was a, story, there was a bit in the story where the, the, there's like fire golems chasing a fox. And they ch- start chasing it down the mountain. And I had completely forgotten that you and I had agreed that you were going to have the drum behind me and would start doing footprints. And I was telling the story and I went and they started chasing it. And you were directly behind me with the drum. And when you hit it, I nearly shit myself (laughs) (laughs) because it is a very loud drum. And I was like fully in the story. I was a fire girl. I was moving and then just boom. boom. (laughs) I was like, I turned around like, oh, Jesus. So a tip for people listening, always agree with someone if you're going to play an instrument. We should do that again. That's a, that was a good one. It's a good story. Good story. It is a good story. Um, did you um, did you find anything was different doing two days in a row? Mm. Yeah, there was a definite... Um, so this is the first time we've done two days in a row with the same group, isn't it? Mm. Probably ever in... It is. Except, except for like camping, where we do, yeah, day and then another day. But this was, yeah. So it was uh, our home ed group is now two days a week, and it was very different. Mm. Well, day two naturally became much more sort of relaxed and uh, a calmer energy, didn't it? Mm. Um, whether it remains like that I don't know but I'm imagining it will do because everyone's sort of settled in and relaxed and probably a little bit tired after the previous day um but I'm hoping did were there any times where you had a conversation with anyone where you were like oh yeah we could do that tomorrow I don't think I did um as they get used to the rhythm of it if you know what I mean yeah the only ones I had and they were quite nice were it was a lot nicer to say at the end of day one um because one or two people kind of got upset at the end you know it was just normal this is coming to a close there's a transition and I've got some anxiety going on and whatever else and it felt really good to genuinely say you will be here in in kind of 12 hours time you know um so it wasn't like 
oh, we'll play your game next week. And I'm definitely going to forget and not remember and you just won't get to actually do it again. I'm palming you off. Um, you know, <clears> to, to actually go like, there's no chance I would have forgotten this by tomorrow. Yeah. You know? Yeah. There wasn't anything. I think until they have done it a few times, I don't think the group will... I think they will just be so used to standalone days that their attention span and their kind of scope for activity will stay at one day for yeah. a little while. Yeah. Um, it would be really nice when they have something that really illustrates the difference, like, for example, clay work, where they come back the next day and it is really dry and hard um, mm. and ready, you know. I'm trying to think of other things like that where you would come back the next day. And... Well, uh, the big one I want to do is bread. Mm. That's, and that's so simple, but I would really like to be able to do good bread or good pizza dough and be able to go, you know, we're going to make it today and we're going to eat it tomorrow. And yeah. that's actually, yeah. a, I think, a very big thing to be able to do stuff over two days. Yes. I did get her, I did get home on the first day and uh, because equally we were very, we were all very tired. And just kind of go, what are we doing? Why are we doing it a second? You know, just mm -hmm. so tired, physically tired. But as soon as it got to the woods and you're in the flow, it's just like, oh, okay, cool. We're just doing this again. It was interesting. Um, one thing I noticed was um, I thought over, because because you and I have been going into the woods and dribs and drabs over lockdown sometimes individually, sometimes together. Um, and we both said that like our woods, as I'm sure lots of other people's woods have, had been through this enormous change. It was like, it was like the woods had gone, Jesus Christ. And the ferns had grown into the paths and the brambles had just gone like, now's our chance, go Poof, everywhere. Um, and I had noticed that going in and I was surprised actually that the, children that came back didn't make make much comment on that mm. um because i to me i would have thought like oh if you see if stuff happens gradually that's when i would expect you to miss it support the podcast today by becoming a patreon member at childrenoftheforest.com check out the podcast links for more details they did a little bit. They did a little bit. Some of the, but it was things that they had personal involvement with. So a couple of the kids commented on trees that they had planted. Oh, yes. Remember? So there were yeah. some trees that had um, really conspicuously grown and hadn't been eaten by deer and were really doing well. And um, some of the kids did comment on those and then were interested to go and find all of the, all of the trees that they had planted mm. um, ages ago. But also my other thought, on why there might not have been that much engagement with with the forest growing is that the first need was the social mm, um, and that's also what I really like about being back and about doing two days is that you kind of it's almost like these big circles do you know what I mean like the first circle of need and engagement is going to be like massive and it's going to mm. extend to the whole group the whole site big energy, big physical movement, um, you know, quite sort of um, not concentrated attention, but wide attention and all that kind of thing. And feeling about like safety, um, both physical and like within the group. Do you know what I mean? Like, where's my place? Where do I feel safe? Do I feel safe? Do I feel safe with you? All that kind of stuff. Mm. And all of that has to be worked through before you get like smaller group interactions yeah. before you get engagement with nature before you know all those kind of detailed things will come like I feel because I think you said when we were reflecting that you didn't notice necessarily um like you know when you might go like see an interest in somebody and go oh they were mm -hmm. really this today so I really think about that in what I offer or um planning the next session and that so you might get a child who's like really interested in whittling for example or <clears throat> like a handicraft of some kind and then you kind of reflect and you go, oh I didn't really see like very many of those particular sort of strands coming out and I think that's mm. because like that the focus is really wide right now um but I think that's completely normal and natural and good and it'll just take time 
It, it, it struck me that it was kind of kind of interesting that um, because of the way that in the UK the lockdown has been rolled out or, or rolled, I don't know what the right word is, the lockdown has been eased in certain ways. Um, and um, so I think our group back last week was um, was the biggest group of people I have been with. Mm hmm children or adults yeah for some time yeah and it did strike me as uh just a, a sort of reflection back on my it was something that I was kind of internally thinking about of like all oh, right there's that this is what I've gone back to first you know in terms of we yeah. talk about you know the children have this need for social interaction and this need for um you know play and like you say getting all those stuff sorted and I don't want to say out of their system because then it makes it sound like it's not a, a need but you know like worked through kind of thing yeah. um and you know we're more able to do that now with other adults in certain situations and stuff but it was like oh I was actually able to do that with a group of children first mm. and then it became like a weird there was a moment where they were all rushing back in and because our group is um it, you know we're not talking about an early years group here we're talking about primary age group and a lot of them you can have a reasonable conversation with um not not necessarily about a reasonable topic you know it's still about <laughs> it's still about absolute inane things but the the, the vocabulary used and the way you talk is is not massively changed um, and as they were all coming back through the gate, I did have this feeling of like, oh, right, this is just like my, this is my work colleagues yeah. coming back. You know, it wasn't, um, it, it didn't feel like, right, I shall put on my role and I shall remember this and I shall uh, behave as if I am Mr. Ames in air quotes um, and do whatever. It was just like, oh, right. Oh, yeah. You know, we talked, you and I talked before about having, um, September tummy yeah where and anyone that works in teaching I think will um relate to that feeling just at the end of August where you go I think I've forgotten how to teach yeah and your stomach I... like flip you're like oh oh my god I've got to do that again and I felt I did feel like that times you know times two yeah um, um then you go back and it's all fine was there anything that you think other than our own like what is there anything you think we could have done better for ourselves like in terms of should you and I have been on a uh couch to forest school thing for our walking to, so that we didn't shock ourselves and spin right. out do you think we should have done a week of walking beforehand or do you think we should have done um more stuff with our own kids and then a smaller group and a smaller group and a bit or you know, is there anything else you think like, oh, I wish that had been more of a gradient? Um, no, but I am glad I did. I did start doing some exercise, I have to say, beforehand. Uh, it mm. wasn't walking. It was just on the exercise bike because I think I went for a walk myself up a hill in the woods near me that reminded me of the hill at work. And I was like, oh, I'm really puffed out. I really need to get this walking. So I just started doing like 15 minutes hit every other day for a few weeks before going back which I'm glad I did otherwise it would have been a lot worse fitness wise and tiredness wise um and I'm really glad that we set up the whatsapp group oh, 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 yeah. oh. oh hello it went all weird then I was just thinking that about the whatsapp group hello hello you went weird then oh I was just thinking that about the WhatsApp group. Oh, sorry. Um, yes. So we just set up a WhatsApp group for the families that were going to be coming, you know, had been with us and were coming back. Um, we primarily... talked about that in another podcast, didn't we? We said yeah, that was the, one of children. the things we'd done to stay in touch. Yeah. For the children to kind of uh, share photos and videos or words with one another and stay in touch. Um, but then in a really lovely way, it became a way for the adults to stay in touch with each other mm -hmm. as well, didn't it? Um, and for them to let us know how their kids were getting on, how they were feeling, um, as well as just sharing little snapshots of their lives. So I think without that, 
it would have felt even weirder coming back. It would have felt very September tummy ish, you know, and you have no idea, you know, what's been going on in someone's life, how they're feeling, what hairstyle they've got. Cause that's another thing. I love that. I love the whole hairstyle and image thing that's happened with lockdown. Um, apart from people giving themselves crazy haircuts and all that kind of schmizzle, but just going what decisions people have made with their hair going, yeah, I'm going to grow it real long or I'm going to like craft it in some crazy style. I love it. Um, but I did yeah. my head with a straight razor. That was a mistake. Oh, exactly. There you go. <laughs> it like a, it off. Felt off. like a weird skin egg. It was disgusting. <laughs> um yeah so no, I'm, I was grateful that we had done that and kept in touch that way yeah I think that was one of the things that was very helpful for our planning was that because we had created a two-way system of community well it wasn't even two-way it was however many nodes of people are in that whatsapp group it was that many way thing and sometimes you and I weren't in a conversation but we could still see people talking about this and this interest and so the first day of planning wasn't like uh, so, so uh, the way I might uh, I guess draw a compar comparison would be when you're planning the first session for a new school group yeah. and you go I've yeah. never met these kids before there's yeah. going to be you know 600 of them and I don't know them and one TA and this is going to be crazy that's, scary that's interesting actually because um we also offered out things to them in that WhatsApp group as well, didn't mm. we? So we talked a lot about the new tree house that we were building mm -hmm. and some of those photograph and video updates on it and asked for their input. So it's no surprise now thinking about it that lots of the play on the first day was around the tree house because that's the thing that we had been inviting mm. them to think about. Um, and then bam, there it is in real life, you know? They'd been like designing it on Minecraft and doing all kinds of ideas for how to make it better and stuff. Yeah. And then it was there in real life. So that must have been really good for them, I think, actually. Yeah. yeah. And it yeah. gives and it gave as well, as much as it gave us a hook for planning to go, okay, we've we're still having these conversations. We know who's feeling like this, we know who's feeling like this, or who's not seen anybody, who's seen loads of people, all this stuff. Um Likewise, you know, sometimes we talk about you know, co-creation and the children needing to do as much planning as as us and actually for them to arrive, not to go, oh, OK, what's changed? What's different? What am I allowed to do? Because they had, you know, it was like pre-learning. They just arrived and were like, where's the treehouse? I want to go on it. I yeah, go on it. You know, um, so if, if I would say if anybody is, you know, starting up existing groups, something like that could be a really good way to just start to bridge that gap, to start to talk about, yeah, you know, and, 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 and I think it was important that our conversation wasn't just, here's what you can't do. Oh, here's definitely. what's going to be changed. Here's yeah. what we, here's what we're not allowed to play with anymore. You know, we, I hadn't done it intentionally, but I just was like, do you know what? I'm really enjoying making this tree house. I'm going to send them a picture of it. I'm going to send them, a thing and ask them where should they, you know where should this thing go and yeah. so you keep that conversation you keep that relationship going um because that would have been a very steep thing to come back to from yeah. no content and it will be with other groups because we haven't done that with every group so it will be tricky to go from nothing back to yeah full steam yeah um i think as well going back to a full day of oh i mean are we going to talk about the fire? The absolute like dog poo fire on the first day. We tried to do anything with that fire and it just would not stay on. I couldn't, I couldn't find the right word. I couldn't, well, we had like, oh, was it the second day? We had like soup that we were just about cooking. And then I was like, oh, I've got some dough in the car that I made this morning if we want to cook it. And we were like, no, let's just leave the fire. It just wasn't, maybe it was just my feeling. I think that of it. It was a great fire. The soup cooking fire it was great oh i didn't like it It didn't bubbling away like video it didn't it i wanted a fire that you know you get up to some nice big logs meaty logs and you can kind of campfire it and sit a, sit a little bit back and do whatever and it just needed lots of feeding and lots of i don't know maybe that's just my own lost the fire skills i think i lost the fire i just think i'd lost i think i'd got complacent with it 
you know sometimes you talk about if we, if we have said if we um if we spend too long using so we use the like wax wood wool mm-hmm. stuff you know it's like wood shavings isn't it kind of glued together with wax mm-hmm. um and then if we're doing stuff so it, then we don't do fires with the kids every week so it might be a little while before we make a fire with like number one sticks at mouse tails rats tails cats tails and yeah. sometimes you and i just are overconfident because we've been using lighters for a little bit and just put it on and go like oh crap that's not working i've got to, <laughs> I've got to style this out i've got to style it. that's the worst one when you're doing fire lighting as a demo and you go like and now what you do is you hold your little tinder bundle over this and you can see it not catching your sticks yeah. and you have to style it out and go so i'll put that one out just for safety and obviously i would let i would let that get bigger if i could i would, I would let that oh that's what you would do i would just admit i just admit it but i've been in quite a lot of fire practice actually because um i've just been taking a storm kettle loads of places that we've been when we have mm-hmm. been allowed out so just into the woods by a house or to the beach or whatever um and doing it without fire lighters so i'm bloody brilliant just ask me basically oh well, need a go. fire just ask me just ask me you know do you know what i'm not going to ask you to do what is i had to redo i had to redo four bits of lashing on the treehouse today why really yeah. which ones well i'm not going to tell you which ones <sighs> but four, four bits of lashing were uh i was going to say something really rude then they were very loose they yeah. were very loose but then there we go is there anything else you think as a reflection on going back no no that's it let's ease back into it yeah. Podca- podcasting is hard and we'll ease into it yeah we've got a couple of ideas for guests we've got a couple of interviews lined up haven't we for um future guests and stuff but yeah. they're all top secret top secret, top secret. Shh, shh, yeah. shh. thank you to everybody that's sponsoring us on patreon um i know it's tricky while everybody's been off work but it does mean a lot so thank you for those people uh and otherwise we'll see you guys later bye bye if you like this podcast and want to support more episodes you can donate through patreon Visit patreon.com forward slash children of the forest to show your support for the Forest School podcast.